like a citizen can attain. It is a logical Mikado. Seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence has rolled the two offices into one, and every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you are a nobleman of the highest rank, to condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. Oh, don't mention it. I am in point of fact a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You will understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal, a primordial, atomic globule. <laughs> and consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering. <laughs> but I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all the great offices of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-table, uh, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once and the salaries attached to them? <laughs> it is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander in Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhounds, Groom of the Backstairs, Lord, Lord Archbishop of Titi Poo, and the Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one. Let a salary, a poobah paid for his services by a salary minion. Uh, but I do it. It revokes me, but I do it. And it does you credit. No, but I don't stop at that. I don't dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshment at any hands, however lowly. I also retail state secrets at a very low figure. For instance, any further information about a uh, yum yum would come under the head of the state a secret. <laughs> Another insult. <laughs> I think like one.
be as you recited. But here he comes, equipped as you his station. He'll give you any further Nice, I try as a nuisance, as 
now from the front of the judicial humor list. I've got him on the list of funny fellows, comic men, and clowns of private life. They never would be missed, they never would be missed. And apologetic statesmen of a compromising kind, such as novelists, royal marines, and Welshmen come to mind. <laughs> and ministers whose high ambition the pettiness may mar. Such as when you need an ambulance, you've got to go by car. But it really doesn't matter who you put upon the list. They none of them be missed. They none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. And they none of them be missed. They're not of them be
to me. No, you're not going to kiss me before all these people. Well, that was the idea. It seems odd, doesn't it? It's rather peculiar. Oh, I expect it's all right. Oh, that's from the beginning, you know. Well, of course, I know nothing about these things, but I've no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual, I think. Hey, Lord Chamberlain, I have no it done.
God, he was beheaded. And I find you are going to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Modified match. Then why do you not refuse him? You forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 15. But I would wait until you were of age. True, from 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays wind instruments outside tea houses is hardly the fitting husband for the ward of a lord high executioner. But shall I tell her? Yes, she would not betray me. What if it should prove that after all that I am no musician? There is certain not a director heard you play. <laughs> I am no other than the son of his majesty, the Mikado. The son of the Mikado? Oh, oh. But why is your highness disguised? What has your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? <coughs> Some years ago, I had the misfortune to capture a Kamsha, an elderly lady in my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius brute of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week, or perish in the ministry on the scaffold. That night I fled his court, and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me, when I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we are quite alone, and nobody can see us. Still, that doesn't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, just take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. If it were not for that, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side like uh, that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes like that. But breathing sighs of unutterable love. Oh. Oh, like that. With our arms round each other's waist, like uh, that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. As it is, of course, we couldn't do anything of fun. Not for the world. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco. <laughs>
considering how entirely my future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel, really hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony. Now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? Can't you see that I'm soliloquizing? You have interrupted <coughs> an apostrophe, sir. Hmm. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. Huh? A letter? From the Mikado? Huh? What in the world could he have to say to me? <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very good. If you can draw the line, so can I. Stop. Stop. Wait a bit. How can I consent to your marrying Yum Yum if I'm going to marry her myself? My good fellow, she'll be a widow in a month and you can marry her then. Oh, that's quite true, of course. I see that. But, but dear me, my position during the next month will be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. Not half so unpleasant as my position at the end of it. <laughs> oh, very well. I agree. After all, it's only because I've got my wedding for a month. But you won't prejudice that against me, will you? You see, <clears throat> I've educated her to be my wife. She's been taught to regard me as a wise and good man. Now, I shouldn't like her views on that point to disturb. Trust me, you should never learn the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Empty, humbly, little, bright, unlike, to make you fool. 
his insult you shall rue. In vain for mercy, on your knees you'll sue. I'll tear the mask from your disguise. Now come, Sir prepare yourselves for new surprising. I'll spoil my soul.
wonder in my author's Japanese way why it is that I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> Can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. <laughs>
secret. Oh, eat, please, do it by degrees. Begin by putting your arm round her waist. Uh, there, let me get used to that first. Oh, would you like to retire? Because Penny and Mr. T are so affectionate together. No, I must learn to bear it. Now, oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like a uh, that? <laughs> so thank you. Would you mind? Now, kiss her.
You're under contract to die in a month's time at the hands of the public executioner. As a man of, of a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? I shall have to be executed in your place. Very well then, behead me. What? Now? Certainly, at once. Chop it off, Coco, chop it <laughs> off. <laughs> My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. I've, I've never even killed a blue bottle. <laughs> Still, as Lord High Executioner, my good sir, as Lord High Executioner, I to be headed in a month's time. <coughs> Not yet, yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to begin with a guinea pig and work my way through the animal kingdom, past mothers in law, until I get to the second trombone. Fine. As a humane man, you don't think I would have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties were purely nominal. I can't kill you. I don't kill anything. I don't kill anybody. Come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge at times. After all, what does he divide them, mind? Why should you? And remember, sooner or later it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I think? <laughs> when making an happy day of it that you've been executed, will do just as well. Here are plenty of witnesses. The Lord High Admiral, the Commander in Chief, the Secretary of State, and the Chief Commissioner of Police. <laughs> but uh, where are they? There they are. They all swear to it. Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted as usual. And uh, will the insult be a uh, cash down or a by credit card? <laughs> American Express? <laughs> that will do nicely. <laughs>
lot of bit, eh? If your Majesty will accept our assurance, we oh. have no idea. Of course. I know nothing about it. I wasn't there. That's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the pool of the access, compassing the death to the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. Not being there. No. There should be a force. Yes. But there isn't. That's the slowly way these acts are always drawn up. However, cheer up. It'll be all right. I'll have it altered. When? Um, next session. <laughs> now, about your execution. Uh, would after luncheon suit you? Can you wait till then? Oh, yes. We can wait till then. Then that's settled. We'll have it after lunch. I don't want any lunch. I'm really very sorry for you all. But you see, it's an unjust world, and virtue is only triumphant in theatrical performances. <laughs> You see our difficulty. 
Yes, I don't know what's to be done. There's that one chance for you. If you can persuade Caddy Shah to marry you, she would have no further claim on you. <laughs> <laughs>
And you will 
extraordinary. Oh, you chap. And if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once! No, no, it must oh. Oh, Katisha, is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? My idea exactly. <laughs> Say so? I see. Nothing could be more satisfactory. 